I think even if you don't like him, his personality, well, I think the one lesson to be gleaned from that interview on High Beast Radio is that he's a real hustler and he's a real survivor. Like he's come back from so many setbacks, right? Especially publicly uh, being kind of, you know, lambasted or privately having to move back with his sisters. I think um, uh, Jeff Staple actually mentions it, which is a good point, um, especially in the Asian society, even with black people as well, immigrants in general, taking an L on the business that didn't work out and then having to move back in with your sister. Uh, what that does to your ego, right? In that kind of machismo society where you're kind of meant to be the breadwinner. Even if your sister's older than you, you're meant to be the quote-unquote the leader of the family and you're having to move back in with your sister with, and all you have to, to your name is, I don't know, a couple of car leases and loads of trainers, right? It must be so demoralizing, but he's come back again and again and bounced back again and again and again for setback for setback. And I really honestly do think his story has a lot, there is a lot of... Um, gems to be um taken from a lot of lessons to be learned from especially for the younger kids coming up in the industry and one particular story that i like a lot is um that he kind of touched upon which i hope kind of gets um rolled out onto into the industry at large is a sort of mentorship program he's take the kind of mentorship role he's taken <clears throat> on board with neek if you don't know who neek is neek is from um, anti-social anti-social social club uh, a brand that's kind of blown up exponentially over the last few years. They've kind of done collaboration with everybody under the sun. And Nick, Nick, Nick lives this like kind of very extreme lifestyle <clears throat> where he's got like a crazy mansion. He drives amazing, luxurious cars. And just, you know, he kind of living a life, right? Because he's kind of come from the streetwear age of like posting on uh, what do you wear today, threads on Nike Talk and becoming a bit of an internet meme. And then suddenly now he's blown up and he kind of, you know, has his own brand and he's kind of really taken over. But he's also kind of had a bit of a bit of a weird relationship with his customers. You know, there's been loads of things online about him, um, especially antisocial, where they don't ship stuff on time. And reputation took a bit of a dent. And um, uh, Ben Baller details in the Hypebeast Radio interview with Jeff Staple how he kind of took it upon himself to kind of like tell him to kind of wake up. Do you know what I mean? Like and kind of get on top of him and kind of, you know, be a bit of a mentor and guide him through the process. And now he says that maybe... Um, ben, uh, he says hope, he hopes that Neek's kind of like on the right path and I would hope that a lot of more OGs in the industry will do the same as opposed to like kind of looking down upon or poo-pooing a lot of these kids that are making crazy amounts of money on like merch or dad hats I would hope they do that because as weird as as this is as this is touched as, as some of the kids may be from the roots of streetwear or from the OGs that kind of pioneer the scene um, like it or not, these guys are the future. These guys are going to dictate what the next step or what the next evolution is going to be. Even if it is a return back to the streetwear roots, they're still going to be an instrumental part of the culture going forward. So it would be nice to see some of these OGs kind of take it upon themselves to kind of really uh, take some of these kids by scrap their neck like Ben Baller did with Neek and kind of really just help. Do you know what I mean? Just selfishly. Not even trying to help to kind of get a piece of the pie or to kind of seem relevant or to kind of get your face out there again. Just help. Because I didn't know nothing. Again, I don't follow. Don't get me wrong. I don't follow Ben Bolo on social media but I had no idea about his link towards Neek and he kind of took it upon himself maybe they were friends before maybe it was something he saw that he could lend some help with but he took it upon himself to kind of just help out and kind of get him back on track and I think that's something that's very very commendable and something again that will help the help hold um hold the scene accountable and something that's going to help the scene in general in the future and I highly recommend you check it out if you're someone involved in the scene and you kind of have a you have a, a bit of a love-hate relationship with Ben Baller. I don't necessarily. I think he's a, an interesting character. I'm not a fan of the whole trolling thing because I don't necessarily think it's, it's necessary. I think you can kind of get you can kind of get away with kind of being uh, you can kind of get away with being Ben Baller without being a troll. You don't need to be a troll. I think he just does that because you know it's his way to kind of it's his self de self defense mechanism against some of the hurtful things people say against him. But I don't necessarily think he needs to do that. But even though, if you have a, another perception of Ben Baller, I highly recommend you check out the interview. I'm, I'm sure it will change. Um, I'm not a fan of the little skits, a little in-between summaries that Jeff Staple does on, inter on the fucking podcast. But, you know, it's, it's a bit overly produced, you know, seasons with that malarkey. But I think, in general, the whole thing is really, really good. And it's good to hear two OGs kind of bouncing off each other and kind of, you know, really talking about the old days of how they came up and some of the lessons gleaned. And I think a lot of the stuff, if you think about it, a lot of the stuff kind of lends itself to a lot of the people that... Um, um, Ben Bull has been associated with, you know, with the ASAP Bari. You know, he's kind of gone through a lot of stuff in public with the whole sexual assault allegations. With Ian Connor, he's going to kind of gone through a whole roller coaster of stuff that he's kind of been involved with, and all the all kind of other guys involved in the org umbrella. So I think all the all the kind of hurdles that Ben Bull has had to overcome have lended its have kind of been really 
instrumental in the kind of advice he's been able to give people who have also gone through the same things and just kind of trying to navigate this sort of like um era in the into now because it must be weird man to be a kid at that age and have millions sitting in your paypal shopify whatever account from selling hats or from selling hoodies and shit with like a simple printed logo on the front it must be fucking it must be super bugged out so i'm happy that someone of his stature is willing to lend a hand and also isn't bitter you know because he's gone through a lot of shitty things in the industry he isn't super bitter about everything and also willing to you know do that sort of thing so that's nice to see i recommend